Hello everybody! Welcome to Start Russia! My name is Yulia Bolotova and today I'm truly inspired because I'm going to talk to a very gifted person who is an artist, a model, an acrobat and much, much more. And her name is Briar Tender. Hi, Briar. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, would you please tell us about yourself a little bit more? Where you're from and what is your educational background? Yes, I, so I am originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, um, and I now live in Los Angeles, California. My educational background is that I got my master's degree at Wayne State University in Detroit, and that school has a direct connection with the, Maha the Moscow Art Theater. So I studied there and then I also studied here in Russia at the Moscow Art Theater. And how did you make your decision to come to study in Russia? I made the decision on my own the moment that I read um, Michael Chekhov uh, to the actor and fell in love with his, his acting technique. Um, I was already in love with Stanislavski's method um, in his school and just being in the presence of where he created. Um, but once I read about Michael Chekhov and how much he was influenced by Stanislavski, I knew that I had to come and figure out how I could also be influenced by him. Um, and it, I was, just from being in his theater and in his space, his energy still lives there. And he inspired me to do what it is that I'm doing now. So. You have studied theater both in the US and in Moscow. Could you tell us about the differences in approach in education in both of the countries? Um, the education here in, in Russia is a lot more intense than in America. A lot more is required of you um, and you're pushed to uh, farther boundaries than you are in America. Um, in America, they allow you to be very comfortable with what you want to do. In Russia, they push you to do things that make you uncomfortable. They push you to learn multiple different instruments, even if you say that you just want to be an actor, because they feel as though you have to know more than just one thing in order to be good at that one thing that you want to do. Um, and I love the way that Russian acting schools train their actors because they train them to be artists, not just actors. And it's something that I think American acting schools can learn from. And when did you come to Russia for the first time? And how long have you lived here? Uh, I came here three years ago for the first time. And I have come back every summer. Um, so for three years now. <laughs> what was your opinion about Russia before you traveled here and has it changed since you came? Yes, it has. So of course before I came here I didn't believe stereotypes that were told to me about Russia but I did fear them a little bit because I had never been here and just like a lot of other Americans they had never been to Russia mm. so they only knew what they had heard and what we are often told is that Russians are very intense and that they would not like a black woman. And I was proved completely wrong. Russians love Africans. They love African features. Um, when I found out about Alexander Pushkin, I <laughs> fell in love. I was like, wait, he's African. This is crazy. Um, so that was literally one of the most mind-blowing things that I experienced about Russia. Um, was being proven completely wrong about how I would be received as an African-American woman. Do you feel comfortable being in Russia? I do. I feel more comfortable being in Russia than I do being in America. And for me, that's a very sad thing to say because Americans paint Russians as being worse than Americans. And Americans actually are the problem when it comes to race issues. Um, one beautiful thing I was told by my acting teacher at the Mahat is that Russians don't see color. Their issues lie in other things and that's so true. Americans see color. So when I'm walking down the street in America, I have to be afraid of someone wanting to take my life because of the color of my skin. Oh no. When I'm here in Russia, I don't have to fear that at all 
when I walk down the street, people are, are like, oh my gosh, can I take a picture with yeah, you? Exactly. You're so beautiful. Can I be your friend? Yeah. I had someone do that to me yesterday and just ask to be my friend. Um, wow. And I would never experience that in America. Wow. Oh, you make me cry. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. And it's true that you are beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it's actually also true that we are very much attracted, you know, to different cultures. Mm -hmm. Really like to explore them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really such a gift, you know, to have people from other cultures coming here mm -hmm. and that you are open to share with us. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. really great. Uh, do you speak Russian, by the way? A little. It's really bad, though. <laughs> in your opinion, is it essential for a person who travels here just for tourism or he wants to live here, is it essential to speak Russian? Yes, yes. I think it, out of respect, you should know a little bit of whatever language it is of the country that you're traveling to. And because of the history with Russia and how English is fairly new to a lot of people, you would be very respectful coming here knowing the basics and how to communicate with people and the reason that you should do that is because russian people here that don't speak english are trying very hard to learn english so if you help by knowing a little bit of russian you can help them further learn english a little bit more and you can help them not be so terrified to speak to you when you do come and approach them um, so i think Everyone that comes to Russia should know a little bit of Russian, especially because it's a beautiful language and it's it's very hard to learn. So when you learn it, you feel like, oh, my gosh, I said that right. <laughs> so I, I definitely encourage people to learn the language before they come. And where did you learn Russian and how? Uh, I learned it online and in a book uh, in America. I taught myself and then coming here, uh, seeing the street signs and knowing the Cyrillic alphabet helped me learn it even more and understand how to pronounce certain things. Name three main differences between life in America and Russia. Three differences. One, uh, manners. Russians are very polite. Very polite and have like this, I, it feels like you guys have a book of rules on how to be polite oh, don't. in the city. <laughs> And I'll tell you why. The whole idea that when you're on the subway and you give up your seat to an elder or a woman or, or someone that's tired would never happen in America. Really? Yes. Uh, I was on the train. I brought some friends here to Moscow for the first time this year and they were mind blown at how your subway systems operate and how well mannered people are and how respectful they are. One of my friends told me the first thing that blew her mind was that when she went down the metro, the fact that people stood to the side and allowed her to walk down. She said, in America, they would have stood in front of me and would have never moved and I would have not been able to walk down the escalator. And I was like, exactly. The second thing was we were sitting on the train and this um, elder came on and he was really tired. And he told the guy, he said, can I sit down? I'm very tired. And the guy got up with no problem and let him sit down. If that was America, that guy would have said, no, I'm tired too, go somewhere else. Hmm, surprising. Very surprising. Americans actually need to come to Russia to learn how to be well-mannered. They are most welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and they should come visit. Yeah, sure. And what is the third difference? The second difference oh, would be, be the, the yeah, difference. the second difference would be uh, work ethic. Um, the way in which uh, Russians find ways to create new work and how clean your city is is also, I would say, the third difference. Your subway systems are so clean and so beautiful. Your streets, at least in Moscow, you take the time to clean them so that when tourists do come, they see a beautiful city. If you were to ever go to New York and go on the subway, you would probably want to wear a mask over your face because it smells really bad. It's very dirty, and we do, and our government doesn't feel the need to create an extra job like street cleaners for people to do things like clean the subways or clean the streets every day. Um, and that's one of the di one of the huge differences between America and Russia is that Russia finds ways to create new jobs for their people. America does not always do that. Are Russian and American people similar to each other? Yes. 
And I think they're more similar than they even understand. Um, and one Amer part of American culture that is very similar to Russian culture is the African-American portion of it. Um, and what's similar is the struggles that both cultures have had to go through and how they've overcome them with self-belief. Um, which is why I think Yuri Batustov uses a lot of African-American musicians in all of his shows. I have not seen one of his shows without him having an African-American artist in it. Um, and I think he understands what it is that African Americans did with art to survive. And Russians do the exact same thing. You use your art to survive all of what you've been through. And that's exactly what African Americans and Americans today have done and are still doing. Um, and that's one of the biggest similarities that I think we have is how we deal with the struggles that we go through. Um, but on the flip side, Russians appreciate theater a lot more than Americans do. A lot more. It's, you go to the theater like how we go to the movies. <laughs> Which is beautiful to see. Yeah, I think maybe one of the reasons could be because theater in America is very expensive, it's very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Like in Russia, everyone can afford to go to, to go. theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in America probably not everybody because of the, the price. price. Yeah. And it's really hard to make theater affordable for low-income families. That's one thing that a lot of organizations in America are actually fighting for, is to make sure that people who can't afford these $50 to $100 tickets can come and experience theater because of that exchange you get, that direct exchange of energy from one person to another. It's so powerful, and everyone should be able to experience it. So. There's a lot of people that are trying to make sure that low-income families can experience it, like how Russia has made sure that low-income families can experience that live theater. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And if we talk about differences between Russians and America, what would you say? I would say that Russians are more aware of who they are than Americans. What do you mean? Like, you guys understand exactly who you are as a people and as a country. And you don't hide, you don't run away from it, and you don't try to hide anything. Americans are in denial about who we are as a people. Um, not everyone is, but half of our country is. Half of our country feels as though we are light years into the future and that we are so perfect and we have no issues then the other half of our country understands that we actually have some of the worst issues in the world when it comes to human trafficking, when it comes to race issues, when it comes to uh, segregation, when it comes to a lot of other things that we often try not to pay attention to, but then say that we are such a nice people and we're very open and we're free and everyone's welcome, but yet we don't welcome everyone. And that's what I mean by we don't really understand who we are yet. We say that we're one thing, but then we don't do that. We say that we accept everyone, but we don't really accept everyone. We say we want change and we're trying to change, but there's some people that are not helping fight the change. They're just sitting there saying, yeah, change, but they're not actually doing anything. Um, as to where I feel like Russians, <laughs> it's, it's very cut. And, and clear of who you are, what you want, and what's going on. Um, which is why one of the th things that I would change here would be the way in which artists are restricted. Um, I wish artists had more freedom here to say exactly what they want to say. But the thing that I love is that the artists here are still trying to find ways to say exactly what they want to say, even with the restrictions, um, which is, some again, a similarity that they have with American artists, is that no matter what restriction you give us, we're still going to try to express ourselves the way we want to. Um, yeah, and where these restrictions in Russia come from? from? In Russia, it comes from the types of plays that are allowed to be done. So there's a, a play here that is about um, 
the LGBTQ community, and I was told that the first act of the play had to be uh, done as a staged reading because of the topic. The second half of the play was able to be produced as a play where the actors could move around, but the first half of the play where the love story like unfolds, they were told, we don't want to see that on stage. We don't want to see two men kissing, so you can't do that. And the artists, they still wanted their play done. So they said, okay, we'll follow these restrictions, but we're still going to get this message out there. Um, so that's one of the things that I've, I've seen some Russian artists go through, as well as I've seen some Russian artists be taken to jail for reasons that are still very unclear because of boundaries that they've pushed. Um, and I think if American artists pay attention to that, there's so much that we, there's so much inspiration we can gain from what it is that you're going through. Because we in America are not that restricted, but yet we are very scared to use our voices sometimes. Would you recommend other people who have never been to Russia to travel here? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I tell everyone to go to Russia. Um, and I, the more I meet people from other countries, like outside of America, And the more I hear that people have not traveled here, I'm like, oh, you guys all need to go because everyone has an opinion of what Russian, Russian people are, what they're like and what the country is like. And after being here, I know that everyone's opinion is not, all, is not correct at all. Um, and if they just come and give this country and the people a chance, they will understand the, the power of getting to know the people of a country versus the history book or getting to know the people of a country versus what your friend told you about this country um, because when you get to know the people you get to know the truth of what's really going on and when I got to know the people of Russia I got to know the beauty of Russia the strength of the people um, the strength of their minds the strength of their 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 power to want to keep going and keep progressing how you guys have literally not had that much time to, to explore American movies, but how you have just gained so much inspiration from our movies and our music to where Americans don't even gain that much inspiration from those same movies and music. Uh, so I encourage people to come here because there's something very special about Russian people that I think the world needs to see. I really do. I'm talking about Russian people. I know that your best friend is Russian. Mm -hmm. How would you describe Russian men? They're very, very polite and well-mannered. It's ridiculous. <laughs> one of my friends who came here, that was one of her other uh, comments that she said stood out to her, was how polite and how out of their way Russian men will go for women. Um, the first time I came here, my best friend would not let me carry my book bag. He would not let me open a door. He would not let me move anything. And when I would do something on my own, he would say, you are being very American right now. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, I, don't, I didn't realize how independent we are as American women um, and how we literally will not accept help sometimes because we think we don't need it. But it's okay to receive help. And Russian men remind you of that. It's okay to let me help you. I'm not saying you're not a strong woman. I'm just saying I want to help you. Um, they're very respectful as well. Very respectful. Um, and yeah, very kind-hearted gentlemen. They're gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the best thing about Russia? You guys' is culture and how you've held on to it and how you're also morphing it into what you want it to be for the future. Um, how strong you guys are. And literally the fact that you don't see color and you have accepted people for who they are from the beginning. You guys accepted Alexander Pushkin. He would have never been accepted in America at all. And that to me is mind blowing. Um, and a lot of people don't know that. Every, I have a pen that has him on it. And every time someone's like, who's that? And I'm like, Alexander Pushkin. And they're like, who's that? <laughs> and I'm like, he's an African man that grew up in Russia. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah. Um, Russia is beautiful. There's the Congas, Yelena Kanga. 
she's mm -hmm. an African American Russian woman, mm -hmm. and her story's beautiful. Um, but again, a lot of Americans don't know about her. Yeah, but we all know her mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is the worst thing about Russia? I would say the restrictions on artists is the worst thing, because Russia has the power to really tell the rest of the, the people have the power to tell the rest of the world a very powerful message on how to live life and what is important in life. But all of those messages come through your artist. It's an artist's duty to reflect the times, like Nina Simone said. And if you don't allow your, your artist to reflect the times the way that they want to, then when new generations come around, they're not gonna know what to be inspired from and they're not going to know how to move forward. Thank you so much for this wonderful interview. It was really great to have you here and to know a lot of information from you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you and always welcome to Russia. Thank you and thank you for what you're doing too. I appreciate it a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So see you see soon. You yes. <laughs> yeah. The winter I'll be back. Yes. <laughs> welcome with new performances. Yes. I really enjoyed that play of mm -hmm. yours, your acting, your oh, style. Thank you. Wow, your team is really very powerful. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for having us, and thank you for coming too, and dancing with us. Yes, that was so fun. sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Yulia. Thank you.